but push yourself to pray more, to fast more, and see what God does. Be expectant that it's not just about reaching the finish line of a number of days, but what clarity will you have after the fast? What direction will you have from God? See how God actually meets you in the midst of it, because he will. And I've seen that through fast is that there's this weight off of your mind. It's just like this. I'm now hungry for the word of God. I'm now hungry for the things of God. I now have this clarity about my life. Hey, welcome to the Eyes on Jesus podcast with Drew and Tim. So grateful that you're joining us, whether it's through listening or whether it's through our YouTube channel. Uh, We're really grateful that you're taking time out of your day to spend with us. And uh, I am, I'm just full disclosure here, I am feeling so good right now. I just got done eating a really great lunch. For those that know me well, I love Mexican food. I love tacos. I love chips. I just pound Coke Zero or Diet Coke and eat chips, and it's just, ah, it's delicious, and I love it. And and Tim, how did you have lunch today? How are you doing? <laughs> so first tip when you're fasting is not to talk about food. You want to try to eliminate it from your mind. And so, yeah, I'm fasting today, which in, I think it invalidates my fasting process when I talk about fasting, because Jesus yeah. says to not let people know when you fast and not act like True. it's, you know, the worst thing in the world and everyone should look at you. And so... I shouldn't even tell you that I'm fasting. I should do it in well, that's, secret. That's true. But you didn't like, you know, you're not, your face isn't worn. You right. look put together. You're showing energy. So Minimal you know, ashes. Biblically, right. Biblically, you're doing your thing, <laughs> man. You know, if anything, I mean, yeah. I'm the one who hasn't like shaved, like, you know, in a minute, I haven't trimmed up. So, you know, you, you've got it put together. But no, that's so, that's incredible. That, you know that what? You're one of the fasting. funniest Bible passages is when uh, Jonah went to Nineveh. And the whole town fasted and put sackcloth and ashes. And it said, so did the animals. So did the animals? So did the animals, yeah. It's so funny that the animal, I just want to picture like what the animals were like in repentance and sackcloth and ashes. Did they sprinkle it all over their sheep and cows? Okay, we're doing this full thing. Women, children, animals, we're all going to repent. Everyone get ready. (laughs) Oh, my Lord. Oh, what would that have been like? (laughs) Hey, it worked because God mean you know. It did. It definitely held his worked. Hand. Everything that, you know, God says to do that'll work, it'll work. So before we dive into all that, so you're fasting yeah. today and you're saying that because, well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about fasting. Yeah. We're gonna dive into that a little bit. And some of our listeners, they might be going, Hey, I've heard about this concept. I, I maybe they've even tried it. I don't know. I'm willing to bet though that a lot of people listening to this have not attempted fasting or maybe like they they don't even really know how to do that and so what i love is that not only are we doing an episode on fasting but we're going to walk you through it like we're going to really dive into what fasting is how you can do that there's many different ways and there's many different you know directions you can go but i'm so thankful that you and your church have developed a a fasting outline of scripture that backs it up, of how to go through it, uh, what it could accomplish, not only personally, but just in, in people re- in relation to you. So uh, I'm yeah. really excited about that. So why don't you kick us off? Tell us a little bit of like introduction here about what we need to know when it comes to fasting. And, and then let's lead uh, our people into a place where, hey, maybe they'll give it a shot. Yeah. Fasting is a spiritual discipline. It's something you see all throughout the Bible. It's not something that you hear a lot of in American churches, I think, right. because while well, we live in America where food is on every corner and oftentimes gluttony is one of those sins we don't want to talk about. And so the act of actually abstaining from eating is something that is not pleasant. It's not fun in the sense of, oh, I get pleasure out of this, but it is something that is important to, I think, cultivate in your life as a Christian, as a spiritual discipline of something you do, just like reading the Bible, just like praying, just like taking communion. These are things that have a purpose and a meaning way above and beyond just sometimes we give credit to. And so that's one of the things with fasting. It was used all throughout the Bible, not just in the New Testament, as a way to petition God, but also as a way to eliminate the noise from our busy lives. We see this in Deuteronomy chapter 4, 24. Uh, The Israelites used it as a tool to petition from God and also to hear him more clearly. And it's also abstinence for a spiritual purpose. And so fasting is not just the elimination of food. 
Isaiah Saldivar calls that Christian dieting. If you just eliminate food without mm -hmm. any other purpose, then you're just, you're just dieting. And I fall into this sometimes is that I look at fasting as a way to kind of cut the pounds. You know, if we just get back from a trip or from a theme park, I'm like, oh, I should probably fast this week. My mind's not really on the fact of, oh, I should get close to God. It's that I need to eliminate right. five to 10 pounds, which is right. something that fasting does, but that's not the reason to do this. And so there are health reasons for it, but that is, there's something greater than that, which is the spiritual reasons behind it. And oftentimes what we see, and this is what we do at my church, is we have, you know, the beginning of the year, you have 21 day fast, 30 day fasts, the churches kind of manage to help the congregants understand fasting and you know, a new year, what better time than to seek after God and seek his purposes yeah. for the new year. And fasting is a great tool for that. But what happens I've seen in my life and other people that I'm around is that once you're done talking about it in January, it's kind of just, you know, crickets the rest of the year yep. on fasting. And that's why we want to bring light to it today is because it is something that can be used in your spiritual tool belt, if you will. You know, Jesus said when talking to the disciples about a demonic experience when the disciples could not cast out the demons, he said, this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. Right. And so, you know, if you're in a situation where you have to petition God for either a health concern, either a spiritual, you know, guidance on, hey, God, what do you want from me in this season? It is a good time to fast. It's also good to do it as part of routine. And so for us recording on Thursday, you know, I fast on Thursdays every week if I can. And that usually is just breakfast and lunch. But that's something I do as part of uh, something that I've kind of incorporated. Okay, I need to do this somehow. And either it's going to be one meal a week or one day a week or whatever right. that looks like. And so we kind of want to share our experiences with fasting to help you understand that this is something that is beneficial to you spiritually. And also when you lay aside the cravings for food, the goal is that you pick up cravings for God, for more of God, right. that you desire him, that you get rid of the physical things that are, that bind us, you know, I mean, I have addiction to sugar, you know, for candy and, and soda. And those are things that I have to control because they can become overwhelming. And so we want to be able to control cravings for physical food so that we desire spiritual food that our heavenly father can give us when we seek after him. Yeah. I think it's really cool that you do this every Thursday because when it comes to fasting, you really need to plan it out. You know, I've spoken to several people that have tried this concept and they're like, oh yeah, you know, I couldn't do it. Or, oh yeah, you know, it didn't really make sense. Or, oh, my, my plan got interrupted. And so they'll do things like, oh yeah, you know, I woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fast today. Yeah. And then somebody invited them to lunch and they're like, well, you know, I, you know, I need to go to lunch. I need to sit down with this person. Yeah. So I ended up not doing it. And it's like, okay, I hear you, but the best thing you can do is from a ways out, say that's the day or those are the days, or that's the weekend, or that's the week, or that's the month that I'm going to be doing this. And I'm right. going to prep, I'm going to like prep my body mentally, physically. I'm going to prep my mind and heart spiritually with prayer and preparation for like what's about to go down. And I think that's great that you're in this flow of, I know every Thursday, this is what I'm walking into. Because you're right, it is hard. And it does, even if it's just like one thing or one meal or two meals, or even if it's just a day, like it's difficult and it's going to take some mental fortitude to go, Hey, I'm not going to give in to my cravings and I'm going to crave something else. And right. so, yeah, just, you know, listeners make sure you're thinking ahead and not just going, Hey, you know what? That was a great podcast, Tim and Drew. I think I'm going to try this tomorrow. It's like, all right, well, yeah, I mean, you could, but maybe you know, maybe give it a couple of days, really try to figure out what's a day that I have the capacity to do this. Cause I know for me, there have been times that I'm like, you know what, I'm going to fast, but I'm not going to tell my wife about it. Like, I'm just going to fast and I don't even bring her in the loop. And then I get home and she's like, I made this unbelievable dinner. And I'm like, mm, all right, well, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> you know, my bad. I didn't bring her in the loop. You know, we're all so-and-so invited us over for dinner. I said, we were going to do it. And it's like, well, I'm not going to be rude and be like, actually, I'll have none because I'm fasting. So yeah. we've got to plan that out. Make sure that it's a day that makes sense. I'm sure you've done that when you're saying, hey, Thursdays make the most sense for me. It's a smart approach. So I, I love that you've planned, you've prepped, 
you know, like, hey, Thursday's my day. That's smart. Yeah. And the biblical precedence for this is that Jesus did it. He talked about fasting. He fasted 40 days, uh, you know, before his public ministry, right? This was kind of right. the start to something where he found it beneficial to get away for 40 days, which is where he was tempted, which is where he said, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, Matthew 4. And so if it's good for Jesus, it's good for us. And I think that yeah. is what we have to look at is that why this isn't something that just went away because of the times. This is something that, you know, Jesus says, when you fast, you know, when you do this, don't be like the Pharisees that just do it for glory for men. You're doing this to get away with God. And so the purpose for fasting should be, it could be multiple things. You know, you're doing it as an offering of worship to God. You know, I'm going to dedicate this time to focus on you. So when I would normally eat, you know, I'm going to take that 30 minutes and I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to spend, you know, time in worship. I'm going to spend time in yep. prayer. You're asking God to, you're trying to align your will with his. And I mean, there's a whole movement of, you know, of monks and of, of people that tried to do things to eliminate, you know, search like the desert fathers of the, the fourth century, I think it is, or fifth century. Like they went mm -hmm. away into the desert to get away from the craziness of life at the time to just be alone with God. And that's how you see kind of the monk movement and stuff like that. And so okay. my point is the fact that, you know, the elimination of self-fulfilling pleasure is nothing new in Christendom. And I think we can learn a lot from it being in America, where you can literally have food at your door in minutes, right? I mean, yeah. you don't have to go out and, and hunt for it. You don't have to go out and, and work. You know, the wife doesn't stay home all day making food. You know, there's not this what other cultures have experienced around food. It's so prevalent now, like it, there's no shortage of it if you have the money to spend on it. And so I think with that, you know, it might be even harder for us in this culture to say no to it. But, you know, the purpose of fasting, you know, is wisdom, petition, intercession, opening your heart, you know, for repentance and confession, preparing yeah. to see the word of God before you go into ministry yourself, you know, set aside time for fasting before you have a new job, before you make a big yep. decision, before you get married, before you buy a house. Like these are perfect times to dedicate to fasting because fasting and prayer together combines for uh, results that you can't just get when you're on your own, when you do five minutes of prayer here and there, your belly's full, your mind is on food and your jobs and things like that is distracting you. This is a way to eliminate distractions. And through that, you can hear God clearer. And I think it's a good idea too, to have people that are willing to fast with you for a specific yep. purpose, whether it's through a church, like, hey, we have this big, uh, you know, building decision coming up. We have this big, you know, we just lost our senior pastor. We have to fast and pray together. And that's not just up to a committee of five people. It's actually, you know, the church rallies behind big things and they can do that through prayer and fasting. Or you just have a friend, uh, a group of friends, a small group, and you can say, reach out to a few people and say like, hey, I really need help with this decision I'm making. Would you mind being yeah. in the state of prayer and fasting for me for this period of time? Don't be afraid to ask. The worst they can say is no, or they might be able to give up a meal here and there and, and dedicate to prayer. And maybe they will hear something from God that we either will align with what you're hearing or it'll be something different. But those are a lot of good reasons to fast. And there's other biblical reasons. I'll go over here, just, you know, Acts 14, they fasted and prayed for to find new leaders. I uh, was used for intercession in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. First Kings 21, 27, for humbling and chastising of yourself to seek God's direction. Judges 20, 26. For spiritual deliverance, that was a verse in Mark 9, 29 that I was talking about, to ask for protection or to seek material provision, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. 27. So those are the reasons. What have you seen, Drew, as far as reasons that, that either you've been a part of or that you've seen churches yeah. uh, call a fast? Yeah, so for churches specifically, it's usually related to either big decisions or big seasons. For instance, this is something that we are currently talking about when it comes to leading into this fall. For people that have been listening to this podcast, they know recently we've shifted the name of our church, the vision of our church. This is after a, a extensive history of 15 years at the church, and now we're kind of embarking on a new journey. So one of the things that we want to talk through and think through and pray through and fast through is like, all right, what does that mean for us? Because that means probably doing some things differently. So what are things that we need to hold on to, or as I say, replicate? And what are things we need to let go of, release, right? What do we need to replicate? What do we need to release? And I feel like we're going to get the better understanding of that through prayer and fasting. So as a church, this is something we're looking at going into late summer. It'll end around the time uh, that we get back to school. That's where we really believe we're going to 
going to start seeing some very serious growth. We want to be prepared for that spiritually. We also want to be prepared for that, for what God's calling us to. And then personally, I, I think what you just hit on is so important when you're having big decisions in your life. I can't tell you how many people have had job decisions, relationship decisions, family decisions, you know, you name it, financial decisions. And they're going, Drew, what do you think? What do you think I should do? And I'm like, well, what does God think you should do? And they're like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, have you asked him? <laughs> have you prayed about it? You know, well, not, you know, and usually it's like, well, not yeah. as much as I should have. What's well, like, uh, not as much as I should be praying. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Or I asked well, him once I'm, and didn't hear anything and just moved on with my life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And listen, in all empathy, I get it. Like, I've been there. I yeah. get it. But, like, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> like, I, I'm not God. I, I don't have that kind of wisdom, that kind of knowledge, and certainly not over your life. But I can tell you biblically, like, what you should consider. And I can tell you, like, if I was in your position, maybe what I would think think about. I'm certainly not going to tell you what I would do because I'm not you, but I would tell you what I would think about, questions I would ask, things I would consider. But ultimately, like, if I ask you what does God think and, and you don't know, that's kind of tough. So how do, how do I find that out? How do I get there? And that's where a lot of times I'm just encouraging people like pray. And then if you are in that position, like Tim, you just said, if you're in that position where you're like, I'm not really hearing anything. Okay, fast and pray, you know, yeah. like, you know, and then if you're like, well, I've done it for a day and I haven't heard anything, do it another day, do it another day, do it another day, do it like fast and pray. You really like big decisions in your life, big seasons in your life. And you kind of know, like based on the weight that's on you, you just kind of know when those are happening. And certainly if you're in ministry, you want to make sure this is a regular thing you do and and you're certainly always seeking what God has for you but even like leader of the family you know like this mm -hmm. is something you want to do when it comes to your family any kind of job you're at this is something you want to do when it comes to your job relationships neighbors friends like this is what you want to ask and so yeah. it's really important and all of this what's beautiful about this is all of this is in submission and surrender to God. And it's such a testimony, you know, like you mentioned earlier, you know, you, I thought it was really funny when you were like, you know, I shouldn't even told you I was <laughs> fasting today. I'm like, no, you, you absolutely should. But yeah, biblically it's hilarious. I think it's though really cool when you don't necessarily share that you're fasting, but it comes up. Like we just happen to record today. We usually record on Fridays. Today we're recording on a Thursday and we just happen to talk about fasting. So it came up. And in that comes through testimony and in that comes through obedience and in that comes through people recognizing, oh, that's a different, that's a different cat. That's a different kind of dude. So like for a lot of our listeners, now you're not just the guy that's talking about fasting. You're the guy that now they know, oh, geez, it's Thursday. Every Thursday, Tim fast. Like that's, I think that's such a beautiful thing. And I think mm -hmm. we need more of that in our church, more of that in our Christian leadership, not going on Facebook and posting, I'm fasting today, so leave me alone. But, you know, it just comes up. Things like this come up because what do we do? We eat, we drink, we hang out, we, we do all these things, right? And if somebody's not doing that, it begs questions. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. And I think that's something people should consider. Not only will this be a blessing to your life and showing submission and surrender to God, but it's going to be a blessing to other people that are going to recognize, wow, he really has surrendered and submitted to God. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, when you, when you approach fasting, you have to be cautious physically. When you attempt something like a fast that's a, a true biblical fast, we'll talk about it, is technically no food, only water. And, you know, there's a lot of people that take maybe an easy approach to this when they could do that. But also some people can't do it. And so you should check with the physician before attempting any type of fast that would be considered maybe a radical fast if you're doing 21 days. Definitely don't recommend 40 days. I mean, some people have done it, but that's extreme. And so, you know, most people can do a meal. Most people can do a day. If it's more than maybe one day, you definitely want to consider the fact that, you know, if you're prone to weakness, too thin, if you have 
something like diabetes or other chronic problems if you're pregnant right. or nursing. Those are types of things you definitely need to be aware of. And there are things you can still do that maybe you will set aside a certain type of food or a certain type of craving that you might have. You know, I personally, when I fast, I do food, but um, I still will have coffee in the morning. I still do caffeine. That's just me. You know, it's not a true fast as far as only water. When I only do water, you know, the first few days, if you do more than one day, are miserable. You have to get over Aren't this they? like... Oh, one day, yeah. You have to get over this hump of, especially when you do no caffeine, of just headaches for about two, yep. three days. But once yep. you're over that hump, it's a lot easier. And I've heard people that have done like, you know, longer fasts and you just don't even miss food after a while. Like your body just learns to deal with it. But the first part- Starts were, eating itself. Yeah. The, the first part of it, your body's like, okay, it's food time. Like, where's the food? Yep. It should be in my mouth now. It yep. kind of freaks out your body and you have to kind of work around that. But you know, there are other ways you can do a meal. You can do a whole day. You can do a Daniel fast, which is only nuts, grains, fruits, and vegetables. You can get rid of something like caffeine or soda or sweets. Some people do social media fasts or technology. Those are fine. But again, those are not biblical fasts. There's nothing wrong yeah. with ab abstaining from, you know, Facebook or something like that for a period of time. It also doesn't count as a Facebook fast unless you tell everyone in a post. Yeah, that's correct. If Lent's <laughs> coming around, the amount of people that are like, talk to y'all after yeah after lit it's like all right thanks yeah exactly. no one's gonna miss you it's all right. good thank i love that you brought that up because it's yeah. so accurate it's so accurate everybody's like hey just want to let you know i'm giving up social media and everybody's like oh we didn't even know you were on here <laughs> but thanks yeah and there's different lengths in the bible even there's one night in daniel 6 one day in first samuel 7 three days and night seven days 14 days 21 days the true superstars that did 40 days were not only Jesus, but also Moses and Elijah. So, that's so like the, uh, how's the, how's the longest, like, what's the longest you've gone? Like, what is the, uh, you done 21 days? I've not done days? a full 21 days. No, I've done a 21 days where it's like, um, you know, Monday through Friday, not eating. Okay. But not like a full 21 day straight. So that's okay. tough. It is tough. So I was, cause I, I was really curious where you were at. I participated in a 21 day fast that was supposed to be like, they didn't really give a lot of guidelines of like, that's why I'm so impressed with what your church does, but they didn't really give a lot of guidelines, but they, they just said like, we're going at it 21 days. Me and like six, seven other people, we were like water only. We got this. <laughs> And we went and got like vitamins and stuff like that we took every morning. And mm -hmm. the first three days we were texting each other like, this is the worst idea in the history of the universe. <laughs> Day like four, five, six, seven was really great. Mm -hmm. But I just remember day 12. I don't know what it is about day 12. I don't know what happened that day. Mm. every single one of us, we were like, we got to do something. We all caved day 12. Then we fasted again until like 18, caved again, and then fasted again till 21. So we caved twice today, 21. Yeah. It still did what we needed it to do. It still yeah. certainly brought us closer, not only to Jesus, but to each other because we were sharing the agony yeah. of it. But I mean, when I hear about I think it was Dana White recently from the UFC. Like he went seven day water fast. And I was like, good Lord, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like that. It's no joke. Yeah. So you got to start small. Like I'm like starting out. It might just need to be like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to cut out this, or I'm going to cut out one meal or I'm going to cut out the, you know, whatever, yeah. or I'll cut out food, but I'm gonna do a 24 hour fast. But don't be that guy that's like, oh, no, I can do this 21-day fast, water only. Yeah. I'll pray all the time because at some point, you're going to be really upset. <laughs> yeah. And also don't beat yourself up when you fail. I mean, that's you right. know, there will come a time when you just can't do it. And remember, when you're fasting, you're not trying to earn something from God. You're not trying to get right. in his good graces. You know, this is a, a training period. And so just like if you're training in sports, right, you're going to fail, but you pick yourself up, you try again. So if you're doing a, a longer fast and you're like, you can't do it anymore, you just give into something, you know, maybe don't give up the whole fast, just push through to the remaining part of it. You know, if you have an important meeting coming up or a birthday party you didn't plan on, 
you know, would God want you to go to the party and engage with your family? Or would he want you to continue a fast that you started? Like, that's what you have to be yeah. in prayer about is what's the benefit for those around you and, and in the situation you're in and not just to maintain the standard of, oh, I'm a, this pious Christian who's going to maintain my fast at all costs. I mean, I remember this was years ago now, my wife and I were fasting and, you know, we hit like day two where I was literally in my bed with my face in the pillow, like just kill me now, Lord, because I was in such, such a headache. Yeah, sometimes it hits you like that. Yeah. And we went out to the mall and like my wife and I just got like Wetzel pretzel bites. Cause like we couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> like we, we tried, we just gave up and uh, you know, there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So, Hey, that will happen, but just kind of know what you're getting into. It is a discipline that you do have to kind of work up yeah. to. Yeah. And so like Drew said, you know, start small, but again, with the, you know, fasting is related to prayer in this document. I haven't researched this, but it says prayer and fasting are used together in the Bible 509 times, which is amazing. 509? Um, alone. The word fast only occurs 22 times as a noun and 26 times as a verb. So they are heavily tied wow. together for prayer and fasting. So again, this is not a health program. This is not a only, you will have health benefits, but this is a spiritual discipline. So what do you do when you're not eating? You know, do you just mope and say, oh gosh, that meal looks really good. Do you look at pictures of food? Do you look at, you know, ASMR videos of food? Like what do you do during the time when you're not eating? Yeah. You know, there's a few things you can do is praise and worship, yep. read and meditate on the word, find a place away from the kitchen to spend this time, right? Take a walk, get kitchen. yourself out. Yeah, take a walk. So that's my number one. That's yeah. my number one. My number one, be in creation and just be like present with the things of God. Right. Like that's my number one. In fact, you know, hey, for the athletes out there, one of the things that I try to do if I know I'm going to fast is I try to go play golf. Right. So I love being outside. I love being around creation. The golf course is just gorgeous because if, you know, any golf course you go to, it's well manicured and usually has some good sights. And you're talking about probably three and a half to four and a half hours of time, where as long as you can resist, like, just don't, when you get to the turn, just drive to hole 10. Just don't even stop. Even if you got to like, you know, use the restroom, just drive to hole 10. Just move forward. Don't get the Snickers bar. Don't get the drink. <laughs> none of that. Just water and go play golf. And what I've learned is that, like, that's a great way, day one, to jump into it and try to replicate over and over because it gets you outside, it gets you moving, it gets you focused on something else. Your mind is occupied, your body is occupied. It's tough to feel weak playing golf. You're hitting a really, you know, tiny ball, and you probably aren't that good anyway, listeners, right? Like, you're like me, you're probably not that good anyways. So it really doesn't matter if you do that. And then by the time you're done, you're like, oh man, four hours went by and I'm good. Like I'm feeling healthy, feeling good, still got to do something. So I'm a big outside, go on a walk, go play some golf, go shoot some basketball, go do something that's gonna, you know, gonna help with that. Yeah. And I'd say too, like, you know, again, with the point of all this, right, is not just to endure pain for pain's sake, you know, and not to be, you know, sadist where you're just like, oh, let's do 40 days and just punish my body, right? The whole point yep. of this is to grow in either relationship with God, because the thing that gets me is when you fast, you realize how much of your life is consumed by food. You really do. You know, as soon as you wake up, what are we going to eat for breakfast? Then you're thinking about lunch and then you're snacking and then you're thinking about dinner and then you're spending money on dinner and you're going to dinner and you're driving there and you're, I mean, that's all fine, but you start realizing how much of your time gets spent on things like food or things like entertainment, where if you're fasting and focused on God, it's yeah. a good reminder of, man, how much time I really don't spend throughout my day on God. And so it's almost like a, you know, check your heart type of thing so that when you're not fasting, you're going to be eating, you're going to be doing stuff, but are you disciplined enough throughout the day? to stop and pray, to do things that yeah. I'm not fasting, but you know, this is why we give thanks for our food. We, we keep our mind on God throughout the day. It's not that if I don't pray for my food, it's going to, you know, poison me. It's that we want to be thankful throughout the day. We want to be prayerful in all things. And so we take God with us both as we're eating, as we're not eating, it doesn't matter. But, you know, I would also encourage you too. like, if you're listening, you're like, yeah, that's good. If I have this big crisis come up, I'll fast. Well, what if you 
incorporated it into your life, something that was more regular, something that is more stretching of yourself. You know, if you've never done more than like a meal before, can you do two meals? Can you do two days? Like, sure. this is something that I think is a personal, it's a personal goal. It's not for us to tell you how much you can or should right. do, but push yourself to pray more, to fast more and see what God does. Be expectant that it's not just about reaching the finish line of a, a number of days, but you know, what clarity will you have after the fast? What direction will you have from God? How will he meet you in the midst of your misery, you know, focused on, you know, your headache? See how God actually meets you in the midst of it, because yeah. he will. And I've seen that through fast is that there's this like weight off of your mind of just whatever is causing it through eating all the time. It's just like this, you know, I'm now hungry for the word of God. I'm now hungry for the things of God. Yeah. I now have this clarity about my life. Whatever decision was in front of me right before I became a pastor, you know, three and a half years ago now, I went this intense time of just, it was six months of prayer. And there were periods, you know, during that time of, you know, week fasting here and there, because it was a big decision for me to leave the job that was after 24 years to be a pastor. Yeah. And it's not something I wanted to take lightly. And that was a perfect time to be in prayer and fasting and seeking discernment. And I got the clarity that I was seeking after. And so I would encourage everyone listening to do. The same, whether it's for big decisions, small decisions, it's something that is, like I said before, a tool in your spiritual belt. Yeah. And I love that your church values this so much that they've created this like whole layout and outline. So for our listeners, that's going to be in the show notes. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to look through everything that we just discussed. And not only that, but at the end, like if, if you've listened to all this and you're like, hey, that's great. I can fast. I don't know how to pray. Even at the end. There's an outline of yeah. how you can pray, what that sounds like, what that looks like, how that's laid out. And, you know, just really thankful that we have the opportunity to do this. I, I really hope that our listeners, they not just hear this, but they start considering, all right, God, you want me to do this? You want me to step into this? And right now, if you're listening to this or you're watching this and you're like, man, I've got some big decisions coming up in my life. Uh, this is an important season for me. You know, I don't know if you're in high school or college and you're like, I'm graduating and I got a big season ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Or if you're searching for the right person in relationship, or maybe you're trying to make sure you're the best parent you can be or the best spouse you can be. Maybe you're trying to consider like, all right, what do I do with these job, this job, these jobs, you know, what, yeah. like if you're in those kinds of positions, this is your opportunity to say, yeah. yep, I'm, I'm going to step into it. And I'd love to hear how it goes. Like, yeah. I'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear. So you can always email us at eyes on Jesus podcast at outlook.com. You can connect with us on our social media uh, pages. You can connect with us on our YouTube channel, which by the way, what we went from like a couple dozen subscribers to now over yeah. 3,500. Is that what I saw? Yeah, like unbelievable it's numbers. It's really cool. Shout out to all the work you're doing there, Tim, to promote and get our podcast out there. And thank you to everybody who's liking, sharing, reviewing the podcast that always helps us. Like, so if this has blessed you in any way and you're like, man, how could I contribute back? How could I really help Tim and Drew? Well, you can like, and share the the podcast, give us a nice little five-star review and share yep. it with everybody, you know, and this has blessed you. We want to continue the blessing and help that spread to others for sure. That's right. And until next time, go with God, grow in discernment and keep your eyes on Jesus. Thanks for joining us on the Eyes on Jesus podcast with Drew and Tim. Don't forget to hit subscribe.